it is said that there are actually more than 25,000 kinds of kamon today. These crests can be categorized into six main types. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. If you're a fan of samurai culture and history, I'm pretty sure you know about the Kamon family crest that they used. Even today, there are shrines, temples, and traditional houses with these symbols. And you can find them on the formal kimono, like this one I'm wearing right now. The question is, since when and for what reason do such marks exist? Is it okay for you to use these family crests without permission? For example, when you make your own kimono? So today, I'll explain about the history of kamon in Japan and introduce a few that were used by the most famous samurai in Japanese history for you to deepen your understanding. Also, at the end of the video, I will help you to find your favorite kamon and talk about the items you can buy and make with them. Kamon can be found everywhere in animes, movies, buildings, and kimono today. So learning about them will surely make you enjoy all kinds of Japanese culture even more. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners, lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So First of all, let's talk about the history of Kamon by breaking it down into five time periods. One, Heian period. Two, Kamakura period and Sengoku era. Three, Edo period. Four, Meiji period. Five, today. One, Heian period. The Heian period is the period when the few hundred small tribes that existed in ancient Japan were unified and the imperial court today moved the capital to Kyoto and started their rule. The most common theory about the origin of Kamon is the symbols on the ox carts, which was the vehicle for the aristocrats. For the court nobles at that time, the ox carts they owned was a symbol of their status, and they needed a landmark to distinguish theirs from others. So they marked their carts with a crest of their own choice and showed off their authority to the people around them with an elegant design. There's also a theory that the patterns that their court nobles used on their clothes and furniture became their common later too. Since there were many noble families in those days, there is no right answer to the origin of common. And it is thought that each noble family had their own origins and patterns, which became their family crests later on. 2. Kamakura period to the Sengoku era From the Kamakura period to the Sengoku era is when the samurai, who were originally just bodyguards for the aristocrats of the imperial court, began to gain more and more power and started to control Japan by establishing their own government. The culture of using kamon quickly became very popular among the samurai society from the Kamakura period as a way to distinguish between friend and foe in the battlefield. In the beginning, tall flags were colored red and white for this purpose, but this was not enough to tell which warlord's army was there. So the usage of kamon among samurai began when the warlords started to put their crests on their flags and battle banners. 3. Edo period The Edo period is the peaceful period ruled by the Edo shogunate, which was run by the Tokugawa family after the long years of war finally coming to an end. The culture of Kamon flourished most during this period because the role of family crests became to indicate and confirm status of each class in society, and people of all statuses were allowed to have them. Let's take a look at the four main classes, samurais, peasants, craftsmen, and merchants, and the purpose of kamon in each class. Samurai, a symbol of authority for each samurai family. Peasants, 
a symbol for large owners to show their authority or as a fashion statement and decoration. Craftsman, a symbol engraved on a product that indicates the brand, quality, or responsibility. Merchants, a symbol dyed on their shop curtains that represents their brand. Four, Meiji period. The Meiji period refers to the end of the 19th century when Japan opened its doors to the world and Western culture started to spread out through the country. Even after this period, called the Meiji Restoration, the culture of Kamon was passed down to the present day. During the previous Edo period, the official use of surnames was considered a privilege of the samurai class and was strictly regulated. However, after the new Meiji government took power, all commoners were required to have a surname to follow Western social systems, which further strengthened the sense of unity in the family. Even those who had not yet decided on a kamon began to choose one as well as their surname and mark it on their formal clothing and gravestones. Thus, by this time, most of the people had their own family crests, just like today. 5. Today Today, it's easiest to remember that kamon is a set with a family name. In general, when you get married and change your surname, you inherit the other person's kamon. However, while the surname is registered in the family register, there is no legal basis for the kamon. To speak of extremes, if you decide, this is our kamon from now on, any kamon can become your family crest. There are many Japanese people today who think that kamon are old and outdated and have forgotten or don't know what their family crests are. However, if your family does remember what their kamon is, the typical places where they are used are their kimono, gravestones, and family trees. In addition, not just for individual families, kamon can also still be found on shrines, temples, and many other things you see when you visit Japan. To make long story short, the history of Kamon goes like this. 1. Heian period, a mark the aristocrats used to distinguish their ox carts. 2. Kamakura to Sengoku era, a symbol that represented a warlord's army plans on the battlefield. 3. Edo period, a symbol of authority for the samurai and farmers, or a logo of brand for craftsmen and merchants. 4. Meiji period, a symbol used by anyone to represent a family. 5. Today, a symbol that can represent a family but has no legal basis. Next, let's take a look at some examples of kamon that were used by the most famous samurai of Japanese history, the three grand warlords of the Sengoku era, Oro Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu. 1. Oda Nobunaga Oda Nobunaga, aka the devil, defeated many powerful feudal lords one after another during the Sengoku era. He was on the verge of unifying the country until he was forced to commit suicide in the Honnoji incident caused by his vassal, Akechi Mitsuhide. It would not be an exaggeration to say that he is the most famous warlord of Japanese history. Nowadays, we have the image of one kamon per family, but in fact, Oromunaga used seven kamon throughout his life. The number of kamon shows the great power he had, as well as the huge impact he made on multiple cultures. 1. Agehacho, a crest used by the Heike clan, which was one of the first samurai clans to gain power during the Heian period. Two. Eirakutsuho, a crest that represents money imported from the Ming Dynasty China and circulated until the early Edo period. 3. Gozan no Kiri, a gift from the imperial family to Ashikaga Yoshiaki, the last shogun of the second shogunate, Romachi. Nobunaga started to use it to prove that the administration was under his control. 4. Maruni Nibikiryo, Another kamon of the Muromachi shogunate, the crest with 
thick lines, which represent spirits and strength, and was favored by the warrior class. 5. Juroku Yogiku The crest he received from the emperor because he was close to the imperial family at the time. 6. Mumoji A crest created based on Zen teachings. However, the most famous crest used by Oromunaga is surely the Oda Moko. This crest was given to Nobunaga's father, Oda Nobuhide, from the lord and protector of Owari province where he was born. The crest that forms the basis of the Oda Moko is the Mokomo. It was introduced to Japan from the Tang dynasty during the Nara period and is one of the five most well used kamon in Japan, even today. 2. Toyotomi Hideyoshi Toyotomi Hideyoshi was the warlord who defeated Akechi Mitsuhide, the traitor who killed Oda Nobunaga. As the successor of Oda Nobunaga, Hideyoshi built the Osaka Castle and unified the whole country for the first time in Japanese history. The family crest of the Toyotomi clan has always been the Paulonia crest, but it was used in the following order. Gozan no Kiri, Goshichi no Kiri, and Taiko Kiri crest. 1. Gozan no Kiri A crest that Oda Nobunaga was originally given by Ashikaga Yoshiaki, the final shogun of the Muromachi shogunate. Nobunaga eventually allowed Hideyoshi to use it. 2. Goshichi no Kiri a crest Hideyoshi began to use around the time when the surname Torotomi was given by the Emperor Ogimachi. 3. Taiko Girimo This is the family crest used by Toyotomi Hideyoshi when he was appointed as Taiko, the father of the imperial advisor. It is said to have been created by Toyotomi Hideyoshi himself. The first two family crests of Gozan no Kiri and Goshi no Kiri were given to many warlords who became his subordinates in the process of conquering various parts of the country. As a result, the number of families using the Paulonia crest increased and it became too common. And that's why the final Taiko Girimo was created. It is especially gorgeous compared to the other two Kiri crests and it expresses the tastes of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who loved flashy things. 3. Tokugawa Ieyasu Tokugawa Ieyasu was who established the Edo Shogunate that lasted for 265 years and laid the foundation of the peaceful Edo period. Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi used several family crests, but Tokugawa Ieyasu continued to use just the Mitzvah Aoi, the three-leaf hollyhock. The hollyhock is a common peronial plant that grows wild in mountains and forests all over Japan. Why did Tokugawa Ieyasu suddenly use such a common plant you can find anywhere as his family crest? It's because he compared the development of his family to the strength of the hollyhock, which grows roots as if they're crawling on the ground. Unlike Ordobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Tokugawa Ieyasu declined to receive the authoritative chrysanthemum and Polonia crest from the emperor and allowed ordinary people to use the chrysanthemum crest freely. As a result, he succeeded in weakening the authority of the chrysanthemum crest used by the imperial court while giving superiority to the Mitsuba Aoi crest. Tokugawa Ieyasu is one of the smartest political leaders of Japan who created a system that was able to keep Japan under control and peaceful for more than two centuries. But this example too represents his cleverness. Then lastly, before we end this video, let's choose your Kamon. You might have already found your favorite learning about the Kamon of the Three Warlords, but let's take a look at the different categories and the five major Kamon to learn more. After that, I will introduce to you a few fun things you can do once you decide what your Kamon will be. 1. The six major categories of Kamon. 2. The five major Kamon. 3. Fun things you can do with Kamon. 1. 
the six main categories of kamon. It is said that there are actually more than 25,000 kinds of kamon today. These crests can be categorized into six main types. I will start from the most commonly used crests and introduce them in order. One, plants, peonies, wisteria flowers, hollyhocks, mokko, leaves, fruits. Two, animals, cranes, butterflies. Three, nature, sun, moon, stars. Four, vehicles, cars, and igeta. Five, vessels, kuginuki, gag. Six, patterns and designs, tomoe, hikiryo. The most diverse and numerous are the first plant crests. And the five major kamon that I'll be introducing later are mostly plant crests too. The Japan Family Crest Study Group has calculated, based on the data of about 2.5 million cases, that the plant crest occupies about 57% of the most used 15 top kamon. Two, the five major kamon. The five kamon that are commonly used throughout Japan are called the five great crests. One, Fujimon. The wisteria flower is known for its longevity and strong fertility and is recognized as a plant of celebration. Two, Kirimon. The paulonia, a high-grade wood, was considered to be the second most noble after the chrysanthemum crest used by the imperial family. In the past, it was allowed to be used only by the warlords who had distinguished themselves. Today, it is used as the emblem of the Japanese government and is also used on the back of the 500 yen coin. 3. Takanohamon The hawk feather crests were a popular kamon among samurai because of the image of a brave hawk. The hawk is the only raptor that has been closely associated with humans since ancient times, and its feathers are also used for the arrows in Japanese archery. 4. Mokomon the origin of this crest is not clear, but it is said to be based on a design of a cross-section of a cucumber or a bird's nest, and it's meant to wish for the prosperity of descendants. You can find them at famous shrines such as Yasaka Jinja and Gion Jinja in Kyoto. 5. Katabamimon It originated from clover and is the most widely used kamon in Japan. Among samurai families, it was used to bring good luck and prosperity to the family and their descendants because clovers are fertile. Yes, my kamon is actually a kind from the wisteria crest group, the sagari fuji, that represents the wisteria facing downwards. I did earlier say that you are free to use any kamon you like, but if you choose a kamon that is hardly used, or only used by certain famous people in history, you might have a hard time trying to find designs of kimono or items with them. However, these five groups of kamon are very popular and famous, so you wouldn't have these kinds of problems. Please let me know in the comments if you were able to find your favorite kamon and why you chose that one. I would love to hear from you. Three. Fun things you can do with kamon. And lastly, these are three things I recommend you do to enjoy kamon even more. 1. Buying kamon stickers. 2. Ordering kimono with kamon. 3. Make items with kamon at an activity in Kyoto. One of the most simple ways to enjoy kamon is to buy the stickers and stick them anywhere you like. I personally recommend you put some on the back of your laptops and smartphones. Next, if you want something formal, you can order a kimono that has a kamon on them, just like the one I'm wearing right now. I especially recommend you order one from Tozando, the martial art item shop that will make such a kimono for you. I recommend it because the ones they make have very good quality, and also it's for training katana budo so it's stretchy, durable, and affordable. If you order a kamon kimono at a traditional shop in Kyoto, it can sometimes cost more than a few hundred thousand yen. 
Lastly, if you ever have a chance to come to Kyoto where I live, it'll be great if you visit Hiragiya Shinshichi, where you can make your own items with your favorite kamon. The items include t shirts, book covers, small bags, and towels. They welcome people from all over the world, so please try contacting them if you have the chance. Everything that I introduced here, I'll have the information in the description box, so I hope you can take a look. Then, lastly, today's conclusion. The history of Kamon goes like this 1. Heian period, a mark the aristocrats used to distinguish their ox carts. 2. Kamakura period to Sengoku era, a symbol that represented a warlord's army and clans on the battlefield. 3. Edo period, a symbol of authority for the samurai and farmers, or a logo of brand for craftsmen and merchants. 4. Meiji period, a symbol used by anyone to represent a family. 5. Today, a symbol that could represent a family but has no legal basis. The six major categories of kamon are 1. Plants 2. Animals 3. Nature 4. Vehicles 5. Vessels 6. Patterns and Designs The five major kamon are 1. Fujimon The wisteria flower is known for its longevity and strong fertility and is recognized as a plant of celebration. 2. Kirimon the polonia, a high-grade wood, was considered to be the second most noble after the chrysanthemum crust used by the imperial family. 3. Takano Hamon The hawk feather crests were a popular kamon among samurai because of the image of a brave hawk. 4. Mokomon The origin of this crest is not clear, but is said to be based on the design of a cross-section of a cucumber or a bird's nest and is meant to wish for the prosperity of descendants. 5. Katabamimon It originated from clovers and is the most widely used kamon in Japan that is used to bring good luck and prosperity to the family and their descendants because clovers are fertile. The three fun things you can do with kamon are 1. Buying kamon stickers 2. Ordering kimono with kamon 3. Make items with kamon and activity in Kyoto. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought there are more than 25,000 family crests, okay, this is gonna take a long time for me to decide. Please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. So, this um, kimono with my family crest on it, this actually was bought from Tozando, the katana shop I was talking about earlier, right? But I wore this, this one actually for almost every single day for like two years when I was working at Kyoto Samurai Experience. Yeah, so if you can see some of the pictures, yeah. So um, it, I haven't worn this for a while now. I think the last time I wore it was probably New Year's maybe? Yes, but I just noticed that it's, um, the colors are definitely fading and can you see that, you know, I can see in the camera there that it's a little bit crooked, you know, because I've been using it to swing swords and train in katana for a long time now. So I'm really want to actually uh, buy a new one. <laughs>